The next person in this series is Mark Bennett. Mark has an incredibly varied career since starting to play professionally over 10 years ago, gaining over 50 caps for both Edinburgh and Glasgow, over 25 caps for Scotland, and winning an Olympic silver medal in rugby sevens. So shall we go and pick him up? How are you? How are you doing? <laughs> Again. And you come? Yeah, please, mate. Thank you. Right, so we're here in uh, on your home patch, Come Knock. Uh, this is where you grew up. This is where rugby started for you. Just tell us a little bit about what it was like uh, living near a rugby club, growing up around a rugby club, because I had a very similar journey, as I'm sure a lot of uh, you know younger rugby players will have had uh, in, in terms of growing up around a rugby club. Yeah, so my dad played um, played at Kamnak yeah. and... What position was he? He was a back rower. Um, seven normally yeah. um, and our weekends would be spent I would always go down and watch the games um, watch spend, your dad play yeah watch him play and yeah. go down just run about kick a bit of ball with other kids that were there yeah. um, and then I think when I was about six year old they started a kids section at the club yeah. um, so myself and my sister were, were there from day one yeah, um, nice. And, and no positions at that age I assume so no just, just headless chicken chasing the ball <laughs> for the best. Um, and yeah, kind of fell in love with, with rugby from then. Yeah. Um, I played and played at Cumnock until I was 17. So I went through all the age groups, played. Yeah. Um, and did you did you very quickly go towards the, the backs or did you have a little spell on the forwards? I actually played hooker until uh, second year, I think okay. it was. And then I moved from hooker to 10. Um, Everyone wants to play 10. Yeah, so then slowly just moved my way back out. Um, yeah. And then my final season, I played played for the first team, so uh, managed to managed to get a run out with my dad as well, which was quite oh, good nice. fun. I did um, that in Holland. He set me up for a try as well, which I'm sure he'll be happy to tell yeah, you about. I bet, I bet. I mean, first of all, you must be incredibly proud uh, of your son, the things that he's achieved in such a short time already. Anything from playing for Glasgow and now Edinburgh, uh, the Scotland team, and uh, you know even an Olympic silver medal. But what was it like? for you as a, a member of the Cumberland Rugby Club to see your son kind of go through the same ranks initially when he was younger? Yeah, it was, uh, I was obviously I'm very proud of what he's achieved so far and I'm sure he'll achieve more over the coming years. But mm -hmm. uh, initially when he was playing at Cumberland, it was just great to see him playing rugby. Yeah. I enjoyed watching Mark playing rugby. I, I, I enjoyed the team that he played in. They were a very yeah. good team. Uh, Played some adventurous rugby, threw the ball about, yeah, and nice. it was exciting to watch. And Mark was an integral part of that, although there was a lot of good players in that team. And I believe that you guys even played a match together. I, I managed to get on for a, I came on as a substitute against. I think it was one of the Glasgow teams, yeah. and uh, although it was a very young Cumnock first 15 at the time yeah. I, and we were getting a bit of a, a trouncing. So you were the veteran at the time? I was, a, I was ex the extreme veteran at the time <laughs> right. and came on the park but uh, we had an opportunity, I had an opportunity to, to make a break and yeah. managed to get a pass away to Mark and he had an easy run under the post so no, you know, take that. you could never yeah. lose it you know. <laughs> <laughs> Mark's achieved some, some amazing things but he, he's also battled with some pretty decent injuries. He's yeah. He's moved clubs, uh, he, yeah. he missed out on, on the 2019 World Cup and yeah. this, this series is about drive and motivation and, and how much do you think he found solace in having his family nearby coming from a tight-knit community like this in times of real need? I think it's probably a, a really important thing that you had support there, you know, especially, I mean, when you're playing well and everything's going well for you, it's maybe less important. But Everyone's certainly, friend, yeah. certainly, uh, when you're going through bad times and you've had a couple of bad injuries, you've got doubts in yourself whether you're going to be able to make it back, whether you'll come back as strong as you were before, whether you know, you, 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 all these doubts must be in your mind. But just encouragement and giving giving them encouragement giving them support in all different ways not just the, mm. through the rugby side of the thing and his personal life and all the rest of it as well i think it's important that he has his family around him uh, and friends who are there to, to support him a lot of people uh, have said to us you know it's great to see mark back again playing at the highest level again mm. doing what he's always done throughout his rugby career and scoring yeah. tries but also i think 
the big difference now is that I, well, what I see in him anyway is that he's matured obviously over this period of time. I think he, he's a better player now than what he was back in 2015 because he was a young guy in the team. He was, uh, you know doing his job mm -hmm. but I think he takes on more responsibility within whatever team he's playing now whether it be Scotland or Edinburgh and yeah. you know he's shown the maturity he's helping other guys around him you know he's more of a team player I would say now than what he was yeah. back in 2015 yeah. but obviously we're delighted to see him back you know delighted to see him that he's he's had the, the kind of the, the mental, mental toughness to see th these injuries off and get back, back to back. where he is yeah, now yeah. you know right jump on in What was it like, first of all, playing in the Olympics, but second of all, the athlete village it must have been crazy. Yeah, it was like playing in it was like, it's one of those ones as a rugby player, you don't think you're going to get there. No. Um, so like the, the actual rugby side of it, I mean, at the end of the day, it's another game of rugby. Yeah. Well, that's the way that I always try to look uh, at it. I guess it. You, at that point, you had already played in front of thousands of yeah. fans and actually the, the, the crowd itself wouldn't have been that yeah. big at the Olympics. Um, but just the enormity of the situation. Yeah, uh, but it's yeah, just go straight on. Um, we'll probably we'll just do a turn at the roundabout and then come back. Yeah, in. yeah. Um, but then, like the the coolest thing was being in and around all the other athletes. Yeah. Um, so like, Mark Robertson described it really well. Is it was like walking around Jurassic Park. Yeah. Just with all the different shapes and sizes, and um, like you had the gymnasts that were. Time. Five foot nothing, and yeah. then your basketball players coming in at like seven foot. Oh, so amazing. like it was, it was pretty cool. Well, what um, was the, what was the, the biggest, the best spot you had? Who did you see that you were like, right? Well, that was so day one when we arrived, we went down to get lunch. Um, we saw Serena Williams, we saw uh, Johan Blake, Usain yeah. Bolt. Yeah. So like, you're just walking around, thinking, where the hell am I? Like yeah. it, it was really cool. Being from this area, I assume you would have always aspired to play for Glasgow. What was it like actually entering that setup? Like, what were some of the characters like in the change room? How impressive was it? Uh, what did it feel like to finally make it to that sort of level? Yeah, it was a funny one because I, I mean, I remember I used to go up and watch Glasgow all the time. So I watched them when I first started going, they would play at Hewenden, um, where I had Jordan Hill play. Mm -hmm. And then I uh, obviously moved to Fair Hill. Um, I ball boyed at one of the games at did Hewenden you? years ago. Um, so, like, for me, going from that side of it and to actually being in and around the squad was yeah. it was amazing. But um I mean I was I was seventeen year old at the time so I'm walking in and there's guys that I've looked up to and watched on the telly for years. Yeah. Um like who? I mean Max Evans. Yeah. Uh, myself and Max they play a very similar style of rugby. Yeah. Um and he was someone that I always I always loved watching. So being in playing the same position as him. Yeah. Um like it was it was I was in awe. And then uh, just just sort of fast forwarding, forwarding from that to eventually making your debut for Glasgow. I know what it felt like to me making my debut uh, in the Premiership at the time. But what were the nerves like in that week leading up? And from the moment your your name was read out on the team sheet, just just walk us through that journey. So I'd I'd been training with the Scotland under twenties, um, getting prepped for the, the Junior World Cup, and. The Sunday night, I got a phone call from Sean Lorraine. I mean, I'd never ever spoken to Sean on the phone. He'd, he'd <laughs> said hello to me a couple of times. You would, as, a, as an academy player, you, you don't. No. Um, and he was all right, Mark. You're starting on Friday night. And I was like, hang on a minute, who are we playing? He was like, we're away to Leinster. Oh god. Um, so then, for me, like, I, I was a, a massive idol of mine was Brian O'Driscoll. Yeah. And I was thinking, oh, I'm getting, gonna get to play my first game against. Against them. Did he play um, that game? And he didn't. He didn't play. Um, but you're probably quite happy. Yeah, I, deep down I was. <laughs> um, but it was just the, the, the buzz that whole week. Like yeah. I was going into training, um, trying to get up to speed with all the calls, but just like I was just buzzing about. So it, it was just um, out of the blue on a Sunday night. It's like yeah. you're playing. You need to yeah. learn the calls. Yeah. Well, I wasn't even training with guys at the time. I was. I'd been away in camp. Um, so, yeah. It was, it was one of those ones just trying to trying to take everything in. Yeah. Um, and Graham, try and enjoy it at the same time. Yeah. Graham Morrison was playing at 12 inside me. Yeah. And 
he, he was great with us. He, he was a really funny guy, quite yeah, dry. Yeah. Um, and I can always remember on the, uh, it must have been like the Tuesday session, the big session, he came up to me just before the session, it was like in defence. Anything goes on your inside, don't worry about it. Anything goes on your outside, that's your, your, your deal. Yeah, yeah. And it yeah, just yeah. kind of took that sort of like edge off it somewhere, right, well, he's, he's got my back here. Yeah, yeah. Um, Actually, to be fair, well, a funny story about Graham was I remember the first day that I trained in the gym with him. It was that week. Yeah. Um, and we had med ball slams. And he came over and he was like, oh, I'll use this ball. And I'd never done it. And I was like, right, okay. Slammed this thing down. It's come back up and burst my nose. <laughs> Gave me the blooming bouncy ball. <laughs> <laughs> so he obviously found that absolutely hilarious. Tell us a little bit about the difference between first coming into the Glasgow camp and then taking that next up and, and first entering the Scotland squad. Because you've gone from I mean, I've done the exact same thing. You've gone from seeing a couple of your heroes mm -hmm. that you've seen on TV suddenly on the training pitch to suddenly seeing all your heroes in one setup in the Scotland team. What did that feel like? Yeah, I mean, it's. I was still a kid at the time. I was 20 year old. Yeah. Um, so, like, I, I just spent my time. I kept myself to myself and just sort of tried to take it in. Yeah. And you know what it's like. You don't. You're not allowed to keep yourself to yourself. Those no. people are always trying to drag you into uh, uh, get get more involved and, and get you out of your shell. It was just cool to be in and around it. And I think I mean we had a chat in, in the car earlier about rugby clubs and rugby teams. Yeah. Like it's the exact same characters no matter what club you go to and, yeah. and what level you play at. So like you're going. Same crowd. I'm going from playing here at Cumnock. We're having the same jokes with the guys in the national squad. So yeah. Like it, it's funny how. Nothing changes, no, really. Yeah, nothing changes. But, you, but you think In your would. head it does. Yeah. In your head it does. And yeah. it's once you get over that that you can start to sort of be yourself and actually really take it in and enjoy it. Just tell us a little bit about that week where you made your, de your debut. Yeah, so... Where were we? We were... It was Murrayfield. We played Argentina at home. Um, the, the, we, we came together for the first week in, in the autumn and I'd been playing really, really well in the build-up. Mm -hmm. You know what it's like yourself. It's one of those ones that you're there and you're like, I might have a shot here. Like I might yeah. actually get my chance. You know, you um, know whether you're in with the chance. Or you not. know you're there or thereabouts. Yeah. And um, it was Matt Taylor spoke to me on the Monday. The team hadn't been announced yet. Fancy. Spoke to me on the Monday. He was like, Oh, you must be buzzing for the weekend. I was like, Well, why? Why? He was like, Oh, wait, we've not named the team. <laughs> Catch you later on. I just walked away. So that was kind of, <laughs> oh, that was the moment that I, that, I realised. That sums like, him up as well. But like, it was actually quite nice because yeah. it, it meant that it wasn't, I wasn't sitting in the team meeting. Yeah, he's done the same thing to me before. Yeah, he, he, I think I'm he was like, prone to This weekend's going to be great. <laughs> Why? Yeah. I don't like that a little bit. Yeah, so it was one of those ones that kind of took the pressure off going into that yeah. meeting. Because um, you know what they're like as well when the, the team's going up and it's nerve wracking. Um, yeah. So it did just take the edge off it, off of it there. I remember obviously singing the anthem for the first time. Yeah. Um, I remember Johnny Gray chucking a dummy when he should have passed it and I just scored under the sticks. Um, <laughs> I think I remember that as well. And I remember, uh, I remember it was horrendous, uh, absolutely pouring down. Yeah. And Marcelo Bosch pulled off, oh no, sorry, it was Hernandez, pulled off just a ridiculous bit of skill in the first like, minute of the game. Right. Um, and like they, they ended up skinning us as a result of it and all of us were just like, oh God, here we go. I started the following week against the All Blacks, which was incredible, yeah. um, getting to experience that. I mean, Lasted at the minutes. top of your game, <laughs> height at night, uh, yeah. the screens are on, there's lights everywhere, you're running out. Uh, Tommy Seymour scores a try almost immediately, I yeah, believe. Yeah, eight minutes in. Um, you're, you're thinking, here we go? Yeah. I'd, um, <laughs> At the breakdown just before that, I want to turn over and pull my hamstring at the same oh, time. So there's a picture of Tommy running in for the score with me, yeah. giving, it the, giving it the big one, holding oh. my leg. Um, <laughs> and that was so you it wasn't, That was me, so it was, I lasted eight minutes in that game. Oh, um, and then got back fit and, and into the squad for, for the Six Nations. So played played all the games in the Six Nations. The week of the Italy game, which was a third match, uh, it had been quite a, quite a tough week. So my, my papa, who so we, uh, we drove past my grand's house, yeah. Uh, my papa died the the week before, the Friday before, because mm -hmm. um, I remember turning up at Murrayfield for training, um, and I got a phone call literally as I walked in the changing room. So um, that that week was was hard, and the, the funeral. Uh, had he been ill for a while, or was it no? Very well, sad? he'd been in hospital for a couple of weeks, but up until then, he'd been pretty pretty good. Yeah. Um, but it was one of those ones that. Like they, they managed, they arranged the funeral for my day off 
during yeah. the week so that we could I could still go and do everything that I needed to do. Um, and then that weekend, I scored my first try for Scotland. Um, scored an intercept after yeah. about ten minutes um, against Very Italy. Fitting. And yeah, it was just like it was quite a nice way to sort of cap off that that week. Um, yeah. And yeah, that's that's the sort of main memory of my my first Six Nations was that one. And then just fast forwarding to that Australia game in Twickenham. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was in the crowd, I didn't get selected, I was in the stand, which is arguably worse, because when you're playing, at least yeah, you're doing you're something. It. Yeah, um, yeah, that day was mad. Like, it, it, it was one of those games that we probably didn't deserve to be in it, mm. for, for big parts of it, but we just yeah. kept doing enough to just stay in it. Yeah, um, made mistakes, then made up for them with something. Yeah, was, something yeah. brilliant. And yeah. then, um, I just remember during the week, we, we spoke all week about when we kicked off, they always wanted to do the exact same thing off the exit. They had yeah. a prop and the prop would pull out the back. Yeah. Um, just as we were about to kick off, it started raining, slippy ball for the, the first time. And the prop's got it and sort of fumbled it a little bit and by the time he's given the pass, it was just there and straight, um, in, the hands. straight in the hands and, and under the sticks. Brilliant. And obviously like Twickenham erupted. Yeah. And I can just remember the only thing I could hear was Johnny Maitland shouting at me. Um, and yeah, we scored that, and I think that one of the that's probably one of my favourite and strangest moments at the same time because we were obviously playing in Twickenham, mm. and everybody was singing the Flower of Scotland during no, the game. No, like no, it, it was no. just like something that you would never expect to happen. I can just remember like the hairs in the back of your neck standing yeah, up, yeah, and especially yeah. when the rain started coming down. Oh well, yeah, we've got this, yeah. um, and then obviously what happened happened. Yeah. Um, but just what what a moment! What's that drive that keeps you going? I always laugh about it with my mum. She, she calls myself, a, or I call myself a glorified dog. Mm. Like I'm happy I eat, sleep, chase a ball. <laughs> like yeah. that makes me happy. I love I love being out and around the boys. I love playing rugby. Yeah. And I love the that camaraderie that comes comes along with yeah. it. Um, so, I mean, it's yeah. the only thing that I miss from professional rugby is being part of a team, yeah. being in the change room, chatting with the boys, you know, having that crack, be it under 18s at Cumnock or yeah. the Scotland squad, the, the, the camaraderie that you get in, in rugby, I think you don't get that anywhere mm -hmm. else. And it's, uh, yeah, and, and for me, like, that's a big driver. And then I just want to, I want to be the best I can. And it's one of those ones that I've, I've had a few years now that I was injured and I wasn't playing very well, but I always knew in myself that there's, I've still got more to offer here. Mm -hmm. um, and it was always, uh, I mean, I had a couple of years at Edinburgh where I didn't play great. Um, I was trying, it just wasn't coming for me. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd go into every single week and I was like, this is going to be the one. We're going to, this will be the week that I show what I'm about. Yeah. And then it would be another crap week. Yeah. And then you go into the next one, oh, no, it's this week. Um, yeah. So that, that, that sort of inner belief of I've, I've got more here yeah. um, is something that has always just And is that because of, of because you knew it was there because you'd done it before or just because you had such huge self-belief that you knew it was still to come? No, it's definitely the fact that I'd done it. Yeah. Um, you I, knew what you were capable yeah, of. Yeah, I knew what I was capable of and even at that, like, it, I mean, my, my dad spoke about it briefly earlier on, like, I think I've still got a lot to offer mm. um, and I think I'm, I'm only getting better. Um, we'll see how long the body lasts, yeah. but... Um, at the minute. And, and is there certain things in rugby that you feel like you still want to achieve or need to achieve to be able to look back on your career with a satisfactory outcome? Or is it more about staying parallel to what you've done now and, and keeping it at the top of your game? It's one of those ones, I just don't want to feel like I've left anything out there. Yeah. Um, whether or not that comes with like medals or anything like that, I don't, I don't really mind, but as yeah. long as I I feel like I've reached and played at the, the level that I know I, I can do and, and sort of showing everyone what I'm about, then I'll, I'll be happy. Yeah. 